How you doing, guys? Okay. Um, you know, I guess if you can um, tell us something we didn't know about Jose. We the greatness, the talent, the arm. Uh, I, let let our audience learn a little bit more about him. Can you help us with that? Yeah, I think he, 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 everyone saw it. I mean, I don't think I could share anything that you know. What you saw is what you what you had. I mean, he's just precious kid 24 years old going about his business and uh you know obviously all the publications and uh stories about him defecting from cuba and saving his mom i mean my heart really goes out to everyone obviously but the mother you know she's building a life with him here in america and now he's gone and she's still here you know uh, obviously with the it's just it's, it's devastating it really is and, and uh, the things that he brought to the table and, you know, you read all the things and the sentiments are all so similar of the, um, you know, guys saying, man, I wish I could have had his appreciation for everything. Everything, every interview was a blessing and appreciative. And he had a maturity that was well beyond his years. He's still 24 and still had grown up in other ways to do, but all those things would come, but his maturity for, for life and competition and, you know, being a good teammate, those those, those are things that you just saw on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's just, it's tough. I mean, I, I can't imagine the Marlins having to take the field today. Um, you know, I've never experienced anything like this. But I, I know, I don't know if Tiki could, could agree, but sometimes getting on that field for those four hours is is uh, some therapy. Yeah. Because you get away from everything and you get between the lines. And I'm not b trying to be insensitive, but sometimes when, when the toughest – some of some things you're going through maybe off the field are tough. You get between those lines. It's really a time that you could focus and really let your mind not wander and uh, kind of get you away from that stuff. But reality will set in afterwards and they'll deal with that. But I'm just hoping that they take some, some solstice of getting out there and just competing again and, and trying to, uh, you know, mourn his loss. It's just going to be tough. No, yeah, no question. Carl Pavano, uh, former big league pitcher, 14 years, part of the Marlins broadcast team as well on uh, Jose Fernandez here. Yeah, no, I think you're right, Carl. You start just doing the things that you do rotely, preparing, getting ready, getting ready for a game, and you, and you, you just don't think about it, even though it's only temporary. It's, it's, it's beneficial. I know you weren't around the team yesterday, obviously, because they canceled the game, but how – how is this locker room going to be? How are they going to handle it? Now, it's the end of the season, and I mean, the Marlins are still kind of in it, but not really. What's this locker room going to be going to be like? You know, I, I think uh, you saw this team evolving um, a togetherness, a unity. I think that started with, you know, the, the Mattingleys and the Wallaces and all the guys that they brought in. You saw the unity and the, the importance of winning. Now, I think this is, gonna, this is obviously going to bring them closer together, but I asked myself the same question. He's such, you know, you, you've been in clubhouses. You you got the ringleaders, the guys that, you know, you got guys that you got 25 different personalities. Some guys are uptight. It takes a little while to loosen up. Some guys are just loose all the time. And he was that guy. And he he's an intangible that you really can't replace. And, you know, you're wondering, you know, how much does that change? You know, you heard about their, when they win, they have like a, like a dance club in their home clubhouse and they all go nuts and they all have their own certain dances. And, and that's going to be a big, vital point I think that's missing there but I think uh, you know with the great leadership they have over there they'll blow to you know get through this together and there's no way this doesn't bring this team even closer than they've already become with everything they've accomplished and been trying to accomplish this year but it's definitely a, a big void there's no doubt about it his personality was bigger than life and you know uh, it's just amazing I'm marveled by how all the things he went through and you see a lot of the Cuban guys, they have these fun, playful personalities. Some could be, you know, when they're vulnerable, they get kind of defensive. But he never had that. He was never bitter about anything he went through in his life. He was appreciative that he got to experience all these things. It, it almost made him the day he pitched, he was out there to win. He wasn't out there not to lose because yeah. he's already been through things that were so much part of life. You know, he made a comment facing David Wright. What is he going to do to me? I've been shot at. I've been in jail. So those, those types of that personality are, are really infectious on a team when you see guys that they, they play with nothing to lose, and he had that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a big part of the team chemistry, I think, that could be missing. It's Carl Pavada with us here on Tiki and Tierney. Carl, I, I'm sure most people are aware he was actually supposed to start yesterday, uh, and I believe it was Connolly coming back off the DL, and, and he was pushed, pushed back to today. Just a normal baseball transaction happens all the time. This one is... 
is amplified for different reasons. Um, the, I don't even know how to ask the question because I don't want it to seem unfair by any stretch, but do you sense any extra remorse on the part of the Marlins front, you know, Mattingly and pitching and coat this staff? Uh, because, you know, when something happens, sometimes you think about every um, possibility and, and what, what could have happened. Or what, you know what I mean? He no was, doubt. He, do you think that they're struggling with that right now? I think human nature is going to, is going to put you through that. And I, and I don't, you know, I think they're going to have to, you know, obviously go through that grieving process and, and answer those questions. And anyone that's been through anything devastating like that, they're always, you know, why this, why that you go through that. That's part of grieving. So sure. There's a little of that. And I don't know for a hundred percent back, but yeah. you know, I think one of the things that we're going to hear is like, what is he doing out on a boat at three in the morning? Well, I'm sure Tiki could agree with me. Us athletes and that professional level, there's such a amount of sacrifice mm-hmm. with how much time you have to spend at the field that you, you sometimes, you know, after a game, if you're a fisherman, that's what you're going to do. You're going to use that time because, you know, you, the next day you have to be at the field at 11 or 12, and you really don't have much time in the morning. So a lot of times you'll do those things at night to get your release, to, to almost feel human because you could get so consumed in sports of going to the stadium, going home, and being like a robot that you really miss out on a lot. And this is a 24-year-old kid with tons of, you know, time ahead of him. So, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't see that as a, as a big problem. I mean, I've been in those situations funny, you know, playing where you take it when you can get it. You, know, you got to get out and have your releases. Sometimes it's after a game and you go out with your buddies or you go fishing at night. And, you know, it's just, um, it's just sad that this has all occurred at this time and, and such a bright spot and, He's like baseball and for Cubans and, you know, Cuban Americans and guys in Miami. I just, it's just devastating. Carl, just wanted to uh, thank you for a couple of minutes. Obviously, you know, you and the rest of the Marlins franchise, the fans, and you, you laid it out well. The city, uh, the, the process of grieving is, is still playing itself out very early. Uh, so, you know, to, to kind of put that aside and, and give us a couple of coherent minutes and uh, let our audience get a sense of, of what's happening down there. We appreciate it, buddy. And, yeah. and God bless the Marlins and, and prayers moving forward. Yeah, thank